Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. I am super excited to have a special guest with us, Luis Fernandez, and we will be talking about turning obstacles into opportunity and how we can build not only businesses, but generative wealth. And we'll explain a little bit more about what that means. So as always, to get started, let's begin by taking three conscious breaths. You know the drill. Inhale, Lewis, I know you're gonna love this. Filling your belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, out of your mouth, let it go. We'll do that two more times. So inhale, filling belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, as you let go, feel any tension in your body melting, feel your shoulders relaxing. And let's do that one more time. Inhale, filling belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, sweet release, let it all go. As you re relax, good. So, Lewis, I'm gonna dive right in. Tell Absolutely. us who you are, tell us about your background, your vision, your work. Take it away. Yeah, so, um. You know, um, my name is Luis Fernandez. I came to the U.S. when I was 17. I'm um, originally from Peru. Um, we basically escaped terrorism uh, to come to the U.S. And once we came to the U.S., uh, everything started happening. I've been uh, involved in the real estate world for over 10 years as a realtor. Sold 78 houses at the height of my last year. Um, became a real estate investor in the process of helping selling, uh, selling as a realtor properties to investors. I learned the business. Now, I, uh, last year, I did 15 houses. I flipped 15 houses. I have a full construction crew. Um, and uh, what we're doing now is we are like a whole solution, real estate construction and investment company uh, for flippers, wholesalers, and, you know, buy and hold people. Uh, so we have the whole gamut of, um, of services uh, from construction to flipping to building a new house to wholesaling to to holding so it's just a lot of stuff thank god right one stop shop i love it and i also have a restaurant which is my passion um I have and a the food's amazing called, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much thank you so much and uh and, and you know it's funny because like both of our businesses are probably the businesses that have been hit the most um, because of the pandemic, right? Like the restaurant business was crushed. We're small, um, you know, mom and pop shop and the real estate business, uh, not from the real estate um, sales side, but from the real estate investment side because of uh, people moving from New York City to the boroughs, to Westchester, you know, to Rockland, to Sullivan, to Dutchess, um, you know, people escaping, you know, the New York City, um, you know, metro area uh, made it, uh, made less opportunities available for investors right more for end users because uh you know everybody that needed to sell could sell at any any price literally now so um the opportunity for investors is really where there's the stress and it's funny because we thought that that was going to happen when you know uh, march uh, march hit we thought mm -hmm. you know i was ho i was holding like four or five properties i was like oh my god will i ever sell them uh fear comes into your mind and then you don't know what to do and you know the market reactivated really quickly we got everything sold but you know there's less inventory for investors so um that's basically what we do uh, i'm sure you're gonna have a couple questions for me that we mm -hmm. can uh, break this down right yes thank you so you actually said beautifully what i was going to one of the words fear so i would love for you to share with us to what you see and what you've experienced as two of the biggest obstacles that people face when building a business, when creating generative wealth, no matter where we are in our economic cycle or even in our the cycle of our life. So what do you see as the two biggest obstacles? Well, I face? mean, I, I think I think fear is number one, right? Um, fear of not, fear of doing things or not doing things, right? And most people get stuck in the middle. Uh, most people don't take risks, especially now. Um, I mean, to me, this is the time to take some educated risk, uh, pivot and position yourself in a different, you know, scenario and take advantage of the opportunities. Unfortunately, fear doesn't let us think, right? And, you know, I read an article that 85% of the things that we fear never actually happen, right? 
Um, so, you know, you know, it's a time to reflect and pivot and learn and really invest in yourself and then find the opportunities that are available, right? Number two is, I, I think the biggest issue is with people is that they don't invest in themselves, right? So I had a coach mm-hmm. for 10 plus years. Uh, I invested, you know, I read over a hundred books um, and I invested a lot in myself, you know, that, you know, uh, an economic cycle can't take that away from me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It can only position me in a, in a better place uh with a better structure and better opportunity right like so you start envisioning things that other people don't and it's like you know like most people are like a deer in a headlight right like <laughs> you just get stuck and they just yes. don't move and they get hit right like at yes. least you know when you're pivoting you pivot to the left to the right and you, at least maybe 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 you get hit a little bit but you just don't take the whole hit right and um mm-hmm. i think that's what business is all about right and um Fear and emotions, right? A lot of times emotions, uh, you know, cloud people and make them do things that they shouldn't be doing. Or a lot of us like our followers and we follow what everybody says. We follow what the media says. We follow whatever. And when you become a follower, then you can't become a leader and nobody's going to follow you if you're not the leader. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So I heard you say, yes. And I heard you say a couple of things. So fear. And I always say that fear either, you know, it's the fight flight or freeze. And yes, it absolutely affects our ability to have clarity. Hence why I always meditate because I feel like it gets the mind clear and calms the emotions. And then you didn't say the word negativity, but you did say something um, about, you know, emotions and also personal development. And I know like in my experience with coaching and all the trainings I've done, one of the biggest things that I've had to shift is my mindset. Do you want to talk a little Absolutely. bit about that? About Because you're somebody I've known, right? We've known each other for such a long time. And you've always been a positive influence in my life. And you've always been an upbeat, great attitude, no matter what's going on. So I'm curious about what you, your experience of, again, as, as obstacles come our way, sometimes we have the tendency to be negative. So talk, can you talk to us a little bit about how you actually apply this positive mindset when you see something that looks like an obstacle to turn it into an opportunity? Because there's got to be a shift, right? There's got to be a yeah, shift. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think there are obstacles, right? I, I don't really believe in obstacles. I believe in like maybe detours. Mm-hmm. Right. I see life as a highway and there's exits. And, you know, like, say, if you're going, you're driving here in Westchester County and you know that you got to take the Bronx River Parkway up to White Plains, but, you know, it's raining. It is an obstacle, but it's not an obstacle. You get off and you take a couple, you know, if you know the way around, you take mm-hmm. White Plains Road up and then you can take the Bronx River again. Or you could just take White Plains off. It might take you a little longer, but it's not an obstacle. It's just like a detour right so mm-hmm. uh in my mind it's like eh, there's no things on obstacles it's it, they're just detours and then you got to pivot in order to really figure out what you're doing and how you're doing and really evaluate yourself to figure out if you're really doing it. And, and you know one of the most important things i i believe is like surrounding yourself by high-minded individuals and you know if you know this might rub people the wrong way and i tell people all the time if if your husband, your wife, your friend, your mother, your grandmother, your best friends are negative, you just got to kind of get them out of your life, right? Uh, because they have so much influence in the way we act that sometimes we don't even know what how they're influencing. You know, like in, in my group of real estate people that were, you know, lead generating and doing all these things, you know, I, I watch every word that everybody says. And, you know, I had a, a guy that's super educated. You know, every time it rained, he goes, oh, man, what a shitty day. I was like, why is it a shitty day? Mm. Right. And it's like, I was like, dude, you do you realize that your, sh- you know, your words impact other people or salespeople need, we need that adrenaline. We need that, you know, like positivity to actually call, call people. Bad words kind of like put us down, right? Or like somebody said, oh, same day shitty day or whatever and i'm like uh, same yeah something like that and i'm like why why can't it be a great day Mm -hmm. we're gonna call call we're gonna make a lot of money we're gonna contact people and we're gonna do what nobody else is doing right so it's just the mindset of, of being positive and knowing that things will will prevail at the end of the day if you continue doing what you have to do it might take you a little longer right it's like the the analogy of the highway right like it might take you a little longer to get white planks right well you get there Right, but if you say, "Oh, the the highway is closed," then you just go back home, right? Right. 
So have you always kind of had that? I love that you say you don't see them as obstacles because that's my word, not yours. Um, you see it as detours. Has that always been your experience or have you developed that kind of framework and paradigm with all of your training and all your life experience? Well, you know, I, 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 think, I think, you know, one of the things of, of being an immigrant is, is that, you know, like you're already, anytime you're an immigrant comes to, to the U.S., you're already in a different territory and a lot of things arise that you culturally you don't even expect and you start getting used to it and you know but you know I surrounded myself by a lot of intelligent people I read a lot of books and I realized that by reading um and and this is what I do with my trainings and my people I tell them what they you know we analyze books and we read them together and uh, we learn but the most important thing is that you know when you read a book um it's not like somebody's telling you oh you know Stephanie you're doing this wrong like it's kind of self-aware you're like oh my god i might be doing this wrong right and we have like this wall when you know somebody's coaching us mentoring us or, or telling us what we should be doing that we are like no no automatically we're doing things right right and we're like no i i know it all you don't have to tell me that's why i started reading books because that's just more effective because you're just listening reading yourself and you're like is that me <laughs> right. right isn't that crazy it's yeah, you can take the information and there's less resistance and an opportunity to be defensive when you're right. when you're when you're with yourself. So I love that. Absolutely. So I love I so well said. So I'd love for you to share maybe one or two personal examples of how you've been able to kind of take some of these, I'm going to use your words, detours and turn them into opportunity. Maybe something about what's going on right now in you know in the economy and your business, but something that people can that are listening yeah. can really like learn from um, that's tangible that they can apply to their life. So, so, you know, it's funny that, you know, it takes 10 years to build a great business, right? It takes a pandemic to ruin it, right? Um, and, you know, we're investors on the most side, uh, on, on the real estate side. We buy and flip and hold properties. And we were usually going to the sources where most people go, right? The auctions, we go to the auction every day. We go through agents. The market wasn't as uh, strong. And there was not that much competition. So you could actually scoop up properties at a, at a discount. It didn't really take that, you know, I did like 15 deals last year. And because of my level of knowledge and knowing of uh, valuation and, and repairs, was it, you know, it didn't consume a lot of my time, to be honest with you, right? Maybe two, three hours a day, making great money, right? And then the market collapses, you know, the, the, the economy goes south and we think that there's gonna be more opportunities. We gear up from our opportunities and the opposite happens, right? Like anybody could sell their property fifty thousand dollars over market value. Why would they say to sell an why would they sell to an investor? So what we started doing is, you know, like four or five months ago, we started we got together, a group of us, um, and we said we have to we have to fish, right? We have to start fishing again. So, you know, when I was doing real estate, I you know, my last year in real estate, I did 78 transactions all over the phone, right? Call calling for hours and hours. And I was like, listen, you know, we got to bring that back. We can't be, you know, the auctions are closed. Uh, you know, we're not going to get, you know, properties on the market at a discount. So we got to look for the stress people and we got to seek whoever is not, and nobody's talking to. So uh, as a matter of, uh, you know, a fact, like now we're, we're dialing about 5,000 people a day. Wow. And we're, yeah. Um, and we're, um, it's, it's taken us four months just to get our scripts and, you know, the team mm -hmm. going together and, you know, learn because everybody's defensive and everybody knows how to call when people don't know how to speak. <laughs> you know, it's the truth though. People don't know how to speak, right. Or, or don't know what they're, they're saying or not saying. And most importantly, in, in, in our world, you've got to be a hundred percent you got to know 100% of what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And why you're saying it. Um, so now we're looking at between uh, 10 and 15 deals a week. Uh, and because we're doing that, loading because, like, you know, Big wait, you look me. at 50 properties. Oops. Yeah, sorry, wait, I'm just going to stop you for a second because it muted. So you're saying this is important. I want people to hear this because you were doing, you did 15 deals last year and now you're saying you're doing 10 to 15 a week. So continue. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're looking at them. We're looking you're at looking. them. You're looking. Okay, you're looking. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Good distinction. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. wow. Uh, I, I, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> you're going to say, where's all the money? <laughs> Can yeah. I get on here? Can I start uh, calling with you? 
yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so basically, um, we got to look at more deals to come across uh-huh. opportunities, right? Um, so what's happening is, um, because you start doing these activities, um, if you if you're talking to 15 potential people that want to sell, and only maybe two or three fit your model, or maybe one, right? What happens to the other properties, right? So we've built a real estate team that if it doesn't fit our model, we're sending that or referring that to our real estate team, Mm -hmm. kind of two separate entities and the real estate team is executing and listing them and selling properties for top dollar like most people want, right? Like we could only, I mean, we're not going to take advantage of people. We could only help the people that need to be helped, right? That need Mm -hmm. cash now that, you know, are, in a short sell situation, foreclosure, we can stop a foreclosure, whatever it is, right? So, so you know, it's 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 what I've always talked to you about, you know, uh, life of you know, of abundance of scarcity. So we're just living abundance, right? Mm-hmm. And because of that, we're building a second business because you know I was in it years ago, coming back to it because it just makes sense if we're doing all the activities. Trust me, not. Very few realtors are even calling five thousand people a month, right? Mm-hmm. We're doing that in a day, so so we're just we just have to do more. We just have to do more, you know. Mm-hmm. So can you speak a little bit to? I, I introduced this at the beginning of the conversation. I want to kind of circle back to it now. Um, is that this concept of generative wealth or generational wealth or creating wealth? What, when I say that, what comes up for you in terms of you know? Because you and I have had conversations over the years about how real estate is such a great investment. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that and how it connects to like why you get excited? Cause I can feel your energy and your excitement when you oh, talk and it gets, it gets me excited. I think you're going to have a lot of people that are like, Oh my God, I want to call him and I want to like start doing this. So, um, and you know, I still have you know, that feeling too. So tell, tell me a little bit about that. Cause you're very smart when it comes yeah, to money. So, so, so I'll tell you, you know, like I, I'm in the point of my life where, you know, again, I'm an immigrant that came to the U S at 17 and, I've achieved what I never thought I would achieve. Um, you know, I retired when I was 42 years old. Um, and I just want to create a path for people uh, that wasn't created for me, right? And whether it's real estate, whether it's sales, whether it's whatever it is, right? Like I tell people, they people come work with me or we mentor a lot of people. And, you know, the skills that they're going to learn with us are going to be applicable to everything. Now, Obviously, I know I know real estate better than ever, than almost anything, and I understand residual income just like you do. And I have, I, you know, I've built a portfolio of properties that you know allow me to actually not have to work and give me residual income. But I think that you know most people are going to Wall Street and they they'll never see that, right? They'll never understand what true residual income is, um, because property value will only go up in value right like they're not making any more land you know you know we are in a metro area where you know property will appreciate no matter what right i mean you know we're actually thinking about going into new york city and buying property this property Mm -hmm. value is going down and there's an opportunity right Uh, but that's for a later date we're like focusing on an immediate area um and you know what we're what we want to show everybody is how to make money, right? Whether you work with me or not work with me, or you just see us in a podcast or whatever, you get motivated to do something that you have no stealing, right? You have, uh, you have no paycheck, right? Like you're on your own and you're kind of like, you know, like, you know, it's crazy. Like, you know, one of my, one of the kids that I just, you know, that's working with me and I'm very proud of him. He's 19 years old. I just met him four, three, four months ago. He's on a sixth deal. Wow. He hasn't even he hasn't even gotten his license yet, but he's staying on his lane. He's doing what he's told, and by the time the by the time he's twenty five, he'll probably have more money than me. Wow! And, and, and maybe I'll even go work for him, and I'll be cool because I'll be on my going down stage, right? Like I won't listen want to up, work parents. Him. Listen up, parents. Right. Generational, right. yeah. And, and I told them, you know, I, I, and I told them, like I tell a lot of people, you know, I went to college, I went to Manhattanville, great school, didn't really do anything for me, to be honest with you. You know why? It prepared me to be an employee. I figured out after being 10 years employed that my increases were 3% a year. 
I was rocking it in sales and the company was making tons of money. And then I stumbled into real estate and I tried it and it changed my life. Right. So uh, real estate is something that there's no entry level. I mean, you know, you could be a business owner and with I think 90 hours of uh, licensing now, almost no money and you can start generating a lot of money. And obviously there's a process to becoming an investor. You have to understand valuation and, you know, you got to become a realtor or work with somebody, an investor that understands, you know, um, uh, and, and the process, real estate valuations, uh, repair values and neighborhoods. And then listen, if I could do it, certainly anybody can. I tell people, I, I tell people all the time, listen, English is my second language. Spanish is obviously my first. I call call more than people in their own native language. And mm -hmm. I sell more than people that speak English as the first language, right? So if I could do it, I think anybody can, right? Agree. I don't know if it makes sense. Hundred percent. So tell us as we wrap up here, what's next for you? I know you're knee deep in, you know, everything you've shared, but is there anything that you're kind of being a little further out that's that's something you want to focus on? Well, our, 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 you know, our goal, our immediate goal is to, you know, be number one or, you know, in the top buyers in Westchester, the Bronx. As you know, I bought something in Long Beach, mm -hmm. which completely changed my life, you know, changed mm -hmm. my paradigm, changed my mm -hmm. thought process, changed my family uh, perspective, changed my kids. You know, I'll tell you a quick story. I was sitting on my deck one day uh, on my dock and you know the property. And, it's gorgeous. Uh, you know, I, I was going to flip it. I just saw it as, you know, you see what you see, right? You see what you want to see. And I saw it just as an investment property. I was about to flip it. COVID happened. My kid uh, saw the house. He's like, daddy, I love this house. Don't sell it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. And then, you know, my thought process changed. I sat, I had a beer. I only drink a couple of beers at a time, you know, just to relax, <laughs> meditate and breathe. And it's funny because um, that day changed my life. And then it was in, I think it was March 19th or 20th. And um, I couldn't believe that I had bought a house cash in Long Beach and was actually going to be my house. Mm. Talk about limiting beliefs, right? Like we all, mm. even no, no matter what, we all have limiting beliefs. And I was like, when my dad, when my kid said, daddy, can I keep it? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, <laughs> even, uh, even as far as I've, I've gone, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna install like limiting beliefs in my kid, especially being it. of Latino origin and, in a neighborhood where we're not the majority, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so to me, it's it's not really necessarily about um, about money. It's about what you could do to others and help them change their thought process. I'll tell you one more thing: that this 19-year-old kid that's going to become a superstar, and people are going to know who he is, like within the next two to three years, especially in our world. I just said, all I want from you is one thing. He goes, "What, Lewis?" I was like, I just want you to pass my knowledge to my son. Mm. That's all I want. Beautiful. Right? Because I know my my son will never listen to me the way he'll listen to a stranger. That's right? the truth. We yeah, listen. We're right. Yes. We're, yes. As a sense of a tenant, I'm his father. Right. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I deviated from <laughs> from the questions you asked me. Perfect. It's perfect. I'm happy you shared your personal story because that's what people need to hear. Is that you know, so honestly, how much success you've already achieved and that you're literally sitting there with your son in this house that you saw probably monetarily, right? Yes, but then your absolutely. son brings in this dad and all of a sudden the element of family comes in because I think that people sometimes make the error that it's either or and right. they're closed and they're not open. So, and, and as you know, to be successful in life, you have to be agile, you have to be open, you have to be willing to wake up and say, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Oh, this is what I do know. So, and it's, and it's that humility. And, and I love also how you bring into this, because this is a very important thing in my life that, you know, helping others and, and helping others get to a better place because of maybe what we didn't have, right? Or because of our journey and being able to lend a hand and be in service and say, look, let's do this together especially Absolutely. these days, right? So, so everything you said is amazing and perfect and inspiring and it gets me excited. Um, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to be on this. And I'd love to just kind of close with two other things is that what gets you really excited today? Like, what's the one thing that you just are like, like gets you up, gets you out of bed and keeps you going? 
Well, there's two things, right? One is my family, right? And number two is the people that are depending on me to mm -hmm. lead them in the right path. And, you know, my vision, I always tell people, you know, you're not a leader if people are not following you, right? Yeah. If, 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 if you take a walk and nobody follows you, you're just taking a walk. You're not a leader, right? Uh, and my vision has to be big enough to encompass all the people that are following me. And that keeps me on my toes and keeps me in, in a more humble, humble, humble servant leader relationship than just a leader that wants to make money because I need to be concerned nowadays, you know, you need to be concerned about COVID. You need to be concerned about mm -hmm. the health, about the relatives. And so, so it's a beautiful time to like kind of come together mm -hmm. and, and, and do things, you know, not only in a business level, but all, on a personal level that they could encompass both. Right. So like if, if you ever see what we do on Fridays at eight o'clock, like the energy and the synergy is just like, it's just unreal. Right. And if that's, the juice, you know, the adrenaline that people need to get them to do 2,000 calls in a day or 1,500 calls in a day and make them make money, because trust me, call calling is really tough, mm -hmm. then I've accomplished what I have to do because day by day we're changing people's lives. Yes, you are. So how can people reach you? I'll put it in the episode um, notes as well, but if there's if people want to learn more about the real estate investing, about your training, about I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to want to learn, probably even parents, because you're an incredible role model that might want to plug kids into your process. So how, what's the best way for them to reach you, Louis? Yeah, so um, my Facebook page is probably the best the best way to do it. Um, I think it's... Uh, and it's your name? Is that... It's, is, Louis is it Fernandez, it's Louis Fernandez. It's Louis Fernandez. And uh, I think it's Louis Fernandez Realtor. And Facebook, mm -hmm. um, that's probably the best way. I mean, I'm not, a, you know, I have Instagram, but Instagram is for the younger kids, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm still on my old, I'm still cold calling, so I'm on the old generation, right? We're, si we're the same age, so so cool it, or similar. Yeah. Yeah, you're, 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 a little, you're, you're a little younger, you're a little younger. So, I'm a yeah, Facebook, my Facebook girl, too. Are, <laughs> my Facebook, page, and we have a group of investors on Facebook that we answer questions, we're like a resource. Also, okay. not only me and my team, but others, right? Okay. Um, What's the name of the group? Uh, New York City, Westchester, a Westchester, New York City investor group or something like that. Okay. I'll put it in the episode notes so that people can, you know, can look yeah. at it and, and check it you out know, and, and find you. Know, you. And, I'll, and I'll tell you, you know, I talk to everybody because, listen, uh, I, I talk to young kids at 17 for 10 minutes, give them guidance and never hear from them again. And that's cool. Um, so, because I, I think, you know, I'm one of those people that outgives. That's what I've done well. I'll give more than anybody else and expect nothing in return because eventually mm -hmm. uh, the world gives you back, right? So the world's Absolutely. giving me a lot back. And I always say, you know, for my yoga training, there's a book called the Bhagavad Gita, which I'm sure you've read in detail on your uh, deck overlooking the bay with a beer. But one of the things they say is nothing is ever wasted. And I think that, you know, even if you had that 10 minute conversation with a 17 year old somewhere down the road, you know, you struck something in him or if nothing else, you gave him attention. So I think that's, that's a gift. And I'm so grateful that you took the time to share with us today. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are going to be excited and inspired by hearing you. It's how you always show up guys. I've known him since high school. So that's a long time. And he always shows up as a positive, powerful force in this world with a big heart. And I love that about you because you're a business man but you're also a, a kind loving man and that to me is like the complete package so thank you and for those thank of you, you who are watching yes for who are watching who are ready to really uncover those limiting beliefs and create a new story for 2021 join me in january i'm doing a six month coaching program and lewis you too i haven't shared this with you but i'm doing a program starting in january at six months and it's an actually like a step-by-step -step process about how to help people uncover those limiting beliefs because as you know some of us don't even know what they are and they're operating in the background so we gotta we gotta get them out we gotta change the story and create a new one um so that's kicking off in january so check it out um go to my website stephaniefilardi.com and lewis have a great day and i look forward to uh to talking with you about some good stuff soon okay absolutely thank all right you so take much. good care thank you bye